Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our metallic star project. Aww. We have Keenan here working the cameras. Working them. And we are going to be doing this project in six steps. Our very first step is we are going to put in our background. And our second step is we will start putting in the bokeh on our background. Our third step is we are going to paint the light values on our metallic star. Our fourth step is we will be doing our medium and dark values on the star. Our fifth step is just kind of cleaning up the edges on the star. And then our last step is just making more bokeh. I love bokeh. Me too. But it's a little bit complicated and I just need to acknowledge that this project is hard. This is a hard project. So if you're here, I'm super proud of you for taking this on no matter where you are in your watercolor journey. And just because you're just starting out, that doesn't mean that you can't attempt difficult projects. I just don't want you to feel, what's the word? Uh, discouraged. Discouraged if it doesn't work out because I just want to say, this guy is tricky, okay? Um, we are using four colors for our projects. Our very first color is red. Uh. Our second color is sea blue. Our third color is yellow ochre. And our last color that I'm not going to swatch is bleed proof white. Mm. I'm using three paint brushes for this project. I have a round two, a round six, and a round 12. I'm using my Let's Make Art watercolor paper and I cut that in half and then I use my favorite tape, which is the Holbein Soft Tape and taped it off. Um, this project came with an outline. I went ahead and already transferred it. I just wanna call attention to the fact that the outline comes on a full sheet of paper. And so to make it easier, I just cut it out and then that way I can actually see the placement on my smaller sheet. It just makes it so I know that it's like not going off the edge, right? Nice. Um, let's do our oath. Okay. And then get started. If you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you. I want to talk about a couple of things before we start. One is if you're looking for a way to simplify this project, try doing this without the background. Us doing kind of a really heavy background along with a super detailed foreground, which is our metallic star, is like a lot. I just want to acknowledge. So if you're looking for a way to simplify this where maybe you're just interested in learning how to paint the star, you don't really like or care about bokeh, just skip to the part where we start the star, okay? Or vice versa, you know mm. what I'm saying? A good background with bokeh with nothing there could still look good. <laughs> it really could. <laughs> um, and I do want to give you guys the where I got this reference photo because sometimes um, it's not as important, but I think with this one, because it's so detailed, it might be nice for you guys to be able to see the actual reference photo. Also, sometimes I feel like it's like a game of telephone where like, I got a reference photo and then I paint it and then make an outline for you and then try and teach you. And it's just like, you know what I mean? It oh, kind of yeah. loses a little bit of information every time. It's like, it's like 1080p by the time it goes, it goes from yes. 8K to 1080p. So the, uh, I got it from Unsplash, which is a great website where you can get royalty free images. That means that you are free to use those photographs to create artwork from. Um, and the photographer, his name is Aaron Burden. And this is it. So I will also be referring wow. to this while I'm teaching, but I want you guys to be able to see a little bit better. So again, unsplash.com. Um, I don't know if there's a title to this photograph. I just Googled, I just searched Christmas star in the search bar on Unsplash, and then it's this one. And the photographer is Aaron Burden. So Aaron, thank you so much for um, sharing your skill with us so we can learn. Yeah, what a good photo. What a great photo. Okay. Now, before we get into the painting part, I wanted to show you two things. When you guys paint reflective surfaces, which are metallic, um, it's really easy for our brain to get lost on what it is that we're trying to paint um, because our brain is only telling us this is reflective. There, I, how, do, how do we communicate reflection on a not shiny surface? Like, how do we do that? And um, it's all about 
the light and it's all about the value. So I grabbed two Christmas ornaments and I just wanted to show you. And Keenan, can I see the side cam? Yes, you may. Get a close up. Okay, so this is a reflective ornament. And if I were to look at this, I'd be like, okay, I can tell that it's shiny by how light the values are and how dark the values are. Do you see that? Yes. Where this one is shiny, but you see how diffused it is? Oh, I like that. So I just want to show you, like, if you're trying to communicate something, a soft shiny, you would still have lights and values, three-dimensional surface, but the um, contrast between the values would not be as extreme. And then if you were looking at a shiny surface like the metallic star we're about to paint, you're, we're seeing the highlights, but I want you to look closer. What are those highlights? Well, you can see that's actually the light from our uh, video setup. Mm -hmm. This is a window. This is a window. And it's just a reflection of everything that's around it. So instead of your mind getting lost of being like, oh shoot, what, how, do I, how do I paint something shiny? Remove that from your way of thinking and instead say, what do I actually see within this metallic surface? Where is there a dark value and another dark value and another dark value? And that's what you're looking for. You look at the values of what it is that you're seeing and then you just recreate that. And automatically, just by putting in those different values in there, you will be able to communicate a shiny reflective surface. It's when we, our brain gets in the way of us seeing something that we get lost and confused on how to communicate it. And this rule is true for no matter what you're painting. So if we wanted to paint something like this, we still have our highlights, but then you just need to control and soften the range of values in between. Okay. Do you guys see that difference? I see the difference for sure. Okay. So, so much of us being able to create the illusion of what it is that we're trying to, to paint is just our ability to observe what it is that we're seeing. And then, then we have to bring in the technical experience of trying to recreate what it is that we observe. Those are two different skill sets actually. And so sometimes we get frustrated because our ability to observe is at a higher level than our ability to recreate. But don't let that stop you. Recognize that it's just uh, something that you have to build up with more practice and with consistency, and then it will get there. I mean, skills improve as long as you take the time to do them. So um, just be just be uh, kind to yourself when it comes to it. Yeah. Okay? Okay. That's also why it's easier to recreate images from something that's two-dimensional than three-dimensional because that's two different skill sets as well. When you're painting from a reference photograph, somebody already did the work of making a three-dimensional wor world flat into a two-dimensional surface. And then when you go out and like and do plein air painting or when you're just like trying to look at a still life and paint, that is actually harder because you are the person that has to take a three-dimensional space and flatten it into something that is two-dimensional while still com communicating three-dimensionality, right? Like right. it is difficult. So I just want to say if you're having struggles where you're just like, I feel really good about being able to transfer over reference photos, but I can't paint from life. Uh, that's because those are two different skill sets. And so um, again, just recognize that and um, improve or practice on the one that you want to improve on. Okay. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. It's a really great, great explanations. I hope that is helpful. And rooms to grow. Yes. It's actually pretty funny as I, I've been thinking through different ways that I can continue to like challenge you guys and increase your skill set while I'm also learning. And um, I don't consider myself an advanced painter. I consider myself an intermediate painter because that's just where I'm at on my journey. And instead of being like, oh, darn it, I'm just like, I know that I will always have room to grow. And that actually is super exciting to me because then whatever I learn, I can just share with you guys. And so it's just like, this can just be a journey that continues and it doesn't have to be like this tiny little space that this is the only place that we live and we fit because that's just not true, right? And so I'm just like, Let's see where this goes. Cool. Okay. 
Now I'm going to use my round six and we're going to do our background. Now you can see from our reference photo here that the background um, from both the painted one and the actual photograph here is, let me pull up just the image. Um, it is completely fuzzy. Like we cannot tell exactly what's going on back here, but what I'm noticing are values and hues. So I have really dark values. I have red values. I have some yellow values and I have everything in between. And then I have some bokeh on top of that. So then when I do my background, I'm basically going to do a wash, um, that goes in between those values. It's going to be super loose, but it's going to be very wet. So you're going to work around your star, which is kind of hard. Just saying. You can mask it off if you want, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to go for it. Let me mix a really dark value I so was, I can pull from that. I was looking at this reference photo to see if there was perhaps a name. Yeah. You know, so it'd be easier for them to find maybe. Yeah. Uh, and it's had 13 million views. <laughs> Holy cow, that that's was, awesome. I, I, that was really cool. Okay, so I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna start by kind of getting the area wet. And a nice like kind of trick that you can use if you wanna keep a clean edge is you can just work around the star because whenever you put water down and then drop the color in there, as long as your paper isn't tilted, the paint is gonna stay within that wet boundary, okay? And I had some color on my brush from when I was mixing, but don't, like, you don't have to lay that color down. And then I'm gonna just drop in. We got some red. And let's put in this dark value. And let's do some more red. So you see how this red like I can help it move, but it's pretty much just stay in. Yeah, it's got a border. Yeah, so that's how I like to approach um, painting around things, is I kind of like pre-wet the area. And if you want to do it in like a light pink, you can too, or just clean water. And then I like to, I'm also gonna mix like an orange to introduce some like warmth to my background. So I'm gonna do just red and yellow ochre. I'm gonna be using a lot of paint. I just wanna warn you now. Thank goodness we give you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, see how that's like more of an orange color? Yeah. But I like that because I speak, I think that speaks to like the lights that are playing in the background. You know what I'm saying? Because there's, oh, yes. you know? And if you wanna do just like some more yellowy sections, you can. You just wanna be careful that it doesn't compete, like you're not putting the same hue in the background um, as you're going to for the star, cause then that can confuse spatial areas. Mm. Also, if you guys have been painting with us for a while, and if you have black or like Payne's gray or something like that, um, that might be an easier color to mix in here. Just because as you can see, like depending on how much yellow ochre and sea blue and red I have, like some areas of this look green. Do you see that? Oh, yes. Yeah. And I don't think that's bad. I actually think that that's fine because that could be a Christmas tree. That could be, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't think it throws it off. But if you're struggling because you keep getting, like, a green color that you don't want, it's because we're mixing in blue and yellow. That's why. Lifting some of this color out. 
then just gonna drop some of this red. So you can see I'm not, I'm just kind of like dropping in colors, dark values. The pure red or the pure orange is reading as my lighter values in this background. And if you want to look at the um, like reference reference photograph that I shared with you to like get placement of these like color changes, you're welcome to. That I feel like that part was not the most important part. You know what I'm saying? So like I loosely looked at it instead of like copied it. Copied it exactly. And just keep on, keep on keeping on. Just work your way around. What would you call this other than uh, if, if you had taken the photo, would you have named it before you sent it into the world? I actually, <laughs> I don't love naming things. Mm -hmm. I I've really. Heard, I've heard that. <laughs> That's why if you look at the names of these projects, it's like basic, metallic star, hummingbird, rose, you know what I Carrots. mean? Carrots. <laughs> <laughs> but I try and keep it simple because then if you're searching for something, like when people are searching to learn something, they're not gonna be like, how do I paint bleeding carrots that are rainbow colored that feel loose and messy? You know what I mean? They just search That's like- That's actually how I search things. Is it really? <laughs> <laughs> well, you like soggy cereal, so I never really know with you, Keenan. <laughs> <laughs> it's completely different. Uh, so, um, yeah, I probably would have just called this like Christmas star, or metallic star, or shiny yeah. star. What yeah. I named the project. That's it's, it's actually interesting too because he didn't even name it. Yeah. He just uploaded it. Uh, you name it. You name it. You do the work. Yeah. He's funny. He's you know what? He's a good guy. You know what? I like him. Yeah. He's great. <laughs> he's really great. <laughs> okay. This is getting. See how orange this is getting? Yeah. That's okay. I'm not gonna like stress about it, but maybe I'll do like another layer of, of red or, sorry, that looked crooked. That top left corner yeah. is my athletic sport time aesthetic color combos. Black and red? Black and red. It's my favorite combo to wear. I don't know why. I, just, I don't even do it on purpose. Every pair of basketball shoes I've ever purchased, black and red. Um, they just make you feel really fast. <sighs> You know what? That has to be it. <laughs> now the nice thing about like having a darker value around the edge of the star is that it will make the metallic portion pop out more. You know what I'm saying? Like um, just d the values that are next to each other make them pop. You know what I mean? I think so. Make them pop. Yep. Get some contrast. And you can see my paper is starting to warp a little bit because of the sheer amount of paint and water that I have on my paper. First of all, can we call attention to the fact that there's like a straight puddle here, but that paint is not moving. Never in. moved. Yeah, now it is because I'm going to touch it. But. Take it. Take it. Some more. Now it's moving. Yeah. Oh, it's like, oh, new zoning? This is a great neighborhood. Why didn't we <laughs> think about this before? <laughs> Should have done this months ago. <laughs> I actually really love the color that I got down here with that. Yellow, I think is beautiful. Yeah, it's nice. Trying to get 
straight edges on these, even with outlines and all of that stuff is super hard. So I just want to acknowledge that too, where it's tricky sometimes, you know? Yeah. That's what's been making me nervous this whole time. What? That outline. You gotta not, not fuzz up the outline. Yeah. The nice thing is like, even if you overlap it just a little bit, we do have bleed proof white Mm. to clean it up. Okay, so now I'm gonna start looking at um, removing some circles for my bokeh. So I'm gonna switch to my six, and I'm gonna have a paper towel handy. And I'm just going to start kind of lifting up color. Now, because I'm gonna move my palette out of the way because I don't need it right now, but I just want to also acknowledge that because this area is so wet, you can lift up an area and then the paint will just kind of seep back into it. Um, if that's frustrating you, try and go for a drier area to lift. So it's not necessarily an urgent thing because if it's, do you want it to be completely dry or is that making it harder to get the bokeh? So when it's super, how do I say this? So like this area that I just painted, I tried lifting out a circle with my brush, but the, it seeped right back into it, right? So right. my circle didn't stay as um, tight as I would like it to. However, trying to lift paint out from a completely dry area is also really hard because that's where you sometimes will get hard edges and you won't be able to lift as much color as you want. So you actually want kind of like an in-between. You don't want it soaking wet, but you don't want it completely dry. So like this area, bottom right-hand corner for me is actually doing pretty good. So then that's, that's another example of practice to figure that out. Yeah. And then sometimes what I'll do like this bottom area is if I want it to lift out easier, I'll just drop in the water mm. and give it a second to just sit. And then after it has sat for a bit. Are you writing a book? What? I let it sit <laughs> after it sat for a bit. <laughs> I am actually looking what? for it. <laughs> and then. What? <laughs> and then I just go back and I lift out from where I. So you see that? Just kind of soften up because right here it kind of looks like fireworks, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah, it is pretty cool. Um, but if I want a smooth circle, which we do, I just smooth, smooth it out. And I'm being gentle with my paper, like you're painting on a baby. Painting on a... I don't know if you've ever painted on a baby, <laughs> but when I paint on a baby, I try and be super soft. And, you know, they move around a lot, so a sleeping baby, perhaps. Yes. In now, my experience, babies like the liners because they have longer bristles, mm, you know, real, yes. those longer, softer ones. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to be doing this all over. You can see there's a lot of bokeh. And this isn't our only run through the bokeh, so I don't want you guys to feel like your background has to be completely perfect before we go and do the star. The other tool that we have at our disposal is Bleed Proof White. And so at this time that I'm lifting color out, I can also take Bleed Proof White over here, I'm gonna grab some fresh yellow ochre so it's not any other color, so it stays kind of more yellow. Mix that with my bokeh, I mean with my bleed proof white. And then I can actually put that color in here. Okay? Nice. Now, I, you are gonna get some more opaque areas than others. And I'm gonna mix more yellow ochre into that so it's more of a yellow. So just like use the lifting 
and the adding both. Use both to make your bokeh circles. And we want them to overlap a lot. Sometimes a paper towel does a really good job of lifting color out too. So I'm gonna actually go a little bit faster at this point than what I've been doing because I really wanted to slow down and show you. But now it's almost like a race against the clock because I want to get a good amount lifted out before it totally dries. And know that when we go back on our last step, that is where we're gonna put our lightest values of the bokeh. So here, we're basically just lifting out mediums and then where there's like strong highlights like here and here and here, we'll put those back in later with the bleed proof white, okay? Sweet. And for the bokeh, my placement, I always like to leave room for flexibility for placement, mostly because I feel like bokeh is a wonderful opportunity to cover up areas that you don't like. So if you like have this weird color wash or maybe you don't like how something turned out, maybe the transition is weird, put a bokeh circle there and hide it. It's interesting where the watercolor decides to pool up. Yeah. So I'm just kind of dropping in water and then I'll go back and lift. And these are all about the same size, so I just need to be aware of that, where it's just like, okay, I made these all the same size, so let's make some smaller ones in there too. Remember to, I think overlapping actually makes it seem more realistic. I love too when you put a, one of the smaller ones with a bigger one in the, the edge of the circle yeah. Is darker. I love that. And because we mixed colors, you're going to see that as we lift up color, we're going to get different color bokeh, which I actually think really adds to the um, overall painting. Um, like I lift up here and it's like a light pink, but I lift it up down here and it's a brown. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think that's cool. Yeah, that's, that is cool. But sometimes that can be frustrating if we like, cause we don't entirely know exactly what color is gonna come up when we lift. You know what I mean? Yep. All I can hear right now is that song from Home Alone. S somewhere in my mind. Oh, you know? Yeah. Doesn't this painting feel like that song? <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> Aw. That's Aww. a nice song. Aww. And sometimes it's nice just to do a few. As you can see, we're kind of staying along the perimeter here. Um, like you don't have to do fully finished corner, move to the next corner, fully finish it, move to the next corner, fully finish it. I am a huge fan of bringing up your painting all together instead of being like, okay, I finished this area and I'm never touching it again. Because your painting totally changes as you paint it and like your values change as you add more values in other areas. Like it just, they inform each other. So I know that when I was first starting out, like in my, um, in art classes and stuff, the teacher talked a lot about that where we kind of just want to 
like fully flesh out in complete detail one tiny section because I think we feel really confident when it's just like oh yeah this part looks really good like I'm doing a great job and it's a much more uncomfortable process to like have your painting go through this like awkward phase for a very 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 long time Teenage and days. then yeah and then at the very end is where it comes together that's much harder it's easier uh it you you automatically want to have these small wins along the way so then you're like yeah this is gonna be worth my time like i'm really good at this i want to make sure that this one area is good and the other ones will follow but it actually becomes really tricky to like make sure all those different pieces live in the same world when you do like fully fleshed out, fully fleshed out, fully fleshed out, fully fleshed out. You know what I'm saying? Interesting. Yeah. So just want to acknowledge that that usually is our natural tendency to want to completely finish off a section before we move on to the next section. And I think it's just because we want to prove to ourselves that it's good, you know, where we kind of want to know. We want to like have a sure thing right. before we like spend all the time painting it. But unfortunately, not everything is a sure thing, you know. You got to trust. Hmm. And then if you want to, you can try and like the bokeh, if you have it go by the star, you have to remember that these two pieces are independent from each other in the way of if that star wasn't there, where would the bokeh go? Mm. So if you have bokeh going behind the star, then you need to make sure that it goes behind the star and not just like a perfect perimeter around it, you know? That makes sense. I know in, I think it was the night tree tutorial, you asked if you can use bleed proof white and mix it with another color and paint with it. I did. And I said, absolutely, but it will affect your levels of opacity. And I just want to call attention to that right here. I mixed bleed proof white with yellow and I put that here. And this was me just lifting color out. So you see how there's still a level of transparency with these bokehs, where this one, it feels thicker. Interesting. These two have the bleed proof white. And you can see that because they're not nearly as um, transparent as the other ones. But I don't think it like, as you can like, I don't think it's a problem. I just want to let you know that that is the difference you'll get. It also seems more like they're a consistent color mm -hmm. rather than a comboed color. Yes. Yeah, because you're, you're layering on top of whatever is there. Right. Hmm. Let's see what it looks like if we add. And the other thing that you, I'm like recognizing as it's drying is your values lighten as they dry in watercolor. That's just how it is. So for me, it's just like, okay, I still want some, like I love how dark I was able to get the value up here. Down here and in the other areas, I feel like I'm missing that a little bit. So you can just do another layer. And if you meet a bokeh, you can kind of shape it a little bit. And depending on how wet your paper is, it will either honor that shape or not honor that shape. <laughs> <laughs> well, that looks cool. I made that one bokeh spot pop. Pop right out. The tricky thing with going in and adding like another layer is you got to figure out a way to like transition it out so it doesn't feel like separate. Does that make sense? 
Like if I were to just leave this like this and this like this, that feels chunky to me. Oh yes. So I need to go and figure out like, okay. And sometimes just like repainting that little area. Like if I were to just do another layer of red right here, I can keep working around the bokeh. Like look at where there are natural breaks in your painting anyway, and paint that. Yeah, I mean? Cool. And remember, if there's any kind of awkward transition, you can always soften that by um, putting a bokeh circle there. Wow, that looks good. Okay, yeah, I feel much better about the darker values and let's keep it going um, over here. Also, it's totally possible that by <clears throat> cleaning up your edges and trying to get tight corners and stuff on your star that your star shape becomes a little bit wonky. That is okay. Kind of expect that to happen a little bit, honestly, because it um, is really hard to keep them nice and sharp. And actually, when I was transferring the outline, I could see it where I was just like, well, that little section is way smaller than the other little <laughs> section. But you know what? That's okay. Feels pretty good. So this is what I mean when I say like, if you want to split this painting into two, you can because, you know, we're still trying to get this bokeh in place. And now that I added another layer of paint, which I think totally helped my values, like I feel really good about where my values are in terms of my, like, wash. But now it's like having to start over again in some of these areas with the bokeh. And then I just want to show you 
like what it looks like if you use just white. So I have some bokeh circles here. I wanna to go to a part that's mostly dry. <laughs> Keep making my circle bigger because it keeps getting a little bit wonky. So you see how like bright that is? Super bright. It looks like the paper where the star is. And that's exactly, and that's why we're gonna wait to put like these lightest value bokeh area because we don't want the bokeh brightness to stand out more than our metallic star. We don't want the values on the bokeh circles to be a lighter value than what we get on our star. So I, that's why we're like putting in our bokeh, but like in terms of like the bright, like the super highlights, we're gonna wait till the end because we need the metallic star to be done before we can really um, get an accurate um, representation, an accurate value. But if you wanna do like mix your bleed proof white with some yellow ochre to get like golden medium value ones, Go ahead and do that. You just don't want it to be like white, white, white. Not yet, anyway. But doesn't that look kind of good? It looks so good. Yeah. And again, make sure they overlap. And then if you have some that are overlapping, look at where the circles overlap and put a little outline there. And sometimes if the area is really wet and dark, if I go in there with some bleed proof white and a highlight, the paint will still seep into the paint that's on the paper will still seep into what I'm laying down, which will then like soften color. Do you see that? Oh yeah. So sometimes you'll put down like a bleed proof white like value and you're like, oh yeah, that looks good. And then you go back to it in two minutes and you're like, whoa, <laughs> that is very different. stronger yellow Oops. now when I want to acknowledge that yellow ochre the color naturally is not like yellow you know what I mean it's like more of a brown um, like brownish green yellow and it when you mix it with white it turns more like tan than it does like a yellow or um, an orange. I actually like that for this project because I felt like it read metallic a little bit better that way. However, if you guys are missing some of that yellow, like saturation that you get from using like deep yellow or lemon yellow, then if you have those colors, you can, you can introduce them to the party and be like, come on, we're having a boca party. Bring your favorite boca. Bring your, bring your yellow and your orange and let's go. Okay, now I'm just gonna start going. Working a little bit quickly, just putting it in. Okay. That's a good, that's a good start. I feel pretty good about that. And I feel like it needs a lift right here. Now what we are going to do is we are going to let this dry. I want to make sure that my background is as dry as possible before I paint my star. Um, but with that, I just want to warn you guys, 
when a background is dry and then if I like, let's say we wait for this to dry and then I start painting along here, even though this is dry, if I accidentally touch it, that's what, I mean, these reactivate with water. So you still can get like bleeds and the color can still bleed into what you're painting, even if the background is totally dry. So I just want to like acknowledge that and warn you. All right, let me get my heat it craft mm. tool. Mm -hmm. I got it from the Holiday Inn. <laughs> it, was a good, it was a nice stay. It was a great stay. And bonus. Bonus. Paintings can dry faster. <laughs> Just ripped it right off that wall. All right. So let's move on to our star. I switched my water out. Oh, nice. Magic. Um, and I just want to call attention to like my colors here on my original painting. I can tell in my original project, I added more yellows to my reds when I was doing it specifically here and here. Cause you see how vibrant those are. Yes. These ones kind of like diffused out into like that dark red color. I'm not mad about that. I actually think that that's going to stand up really nice against my metallic star. But for you guys that are painting this, if you're just like, what happened? Well, just do a stronger reds with um, a little bit more yellow and then make sure that the water that you were putting down first was clean so it didn't darken. Okay. Okay. Also, look at my paper towel. Look how I pretty know. it is. It looks good. It looks really good. Huh. I need a new one though. Okay, so what we're going to do is the, this star has different um, like faces, right? Like planes. You see how they're like sectioned off and come to a point? And the light is hitting them in such a way that some of the sections are highlighted and some of them are not. And we're gonna use that to our advantage when we're painting because we're gonna like kind of work our way around the star doing every other section so then the sections can dry before we paint next to it. And um, if you look closely, and I'm looking at my reference photo here, in the individual sections, there are areas where there are different values and some that are not. So if you look at this edge right here, like this little section, that's pretty much a light value and that's pretty much a medium value that's flat. There's not a lot of variation in that. But if we look at this section, especially on this right hand side, we have a very strong highlight, we have some medium values, we have some dark values. So you can go off my reference photo, although if it's more helpful for you to look at the actual reference photo, I would suggest doing that because I'm sure I didn't capture everything. And then that way you can get like a little bit under, better understanding. Also, you can see here that there's like rounded dents in this star. Do you see that? Yeah. I decided to leave those out because um, even as like a viewer looking at a photograph, I'm thinking, what's going on there? Right. Why are there those dents? It's confusing. I, I don't understand it. And I felt like that if we added it, it would have been um, possibly a distraction mm. to what we're painting. But look at the difference in values between this guy and this guy. Like that is like black. Oh, I know. So pay, this is a great exercise in looking at how values relate to each other. And you don't have to say, um, <clears throat> if it's, you don't have to be like light, light, medium, medium, light. You can just say, how does this one relate to this one? How does this one relate to this one? But you just want to like start a reference and then like keep it, mm. you know? Yep. And then you can check them by being like, okay, well, how does this part relate to this part? How does this part relate to this part? So you got it? Got it. Well, let's go. I'm going to move to my six and I want to make sure that I'm using yellow ochre with no bleed proof white in it. Not yet. Anyway, just straight yellow ochre and you go ahead and add water to that yellow ochre to get a lighter value. And I am just going to start in this section right here and paint it using this light value. And it feels like right where it's coming across that 
point is kind of where I start to get a little bit of a darker value. Hmm. Okay, and then let's do our next section. So I'm gonna look, I'm looking at where there are my lightest values. So I got here, 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 this section, and kind of here. We could do that one too. This right, the very top on the right hand side, I would say is probably the trickiest one to paint because there is so much change within this little section. So just do your best. And if you need to make your, um, like right now I'm putting in a slightly little hint of a different value in there, trying to go off of my reference photo. Instead of adding this dark color that I mix, I'm gonna add a little bit of red to it. So then it adds to the saturation and it makes it more like orangey instead of gray or green. Now, sometimes when I'm introducing like a little hint of another value in a wet area, you can go about it two ways. You can do it while it's nice, like still wet and drop in and it will just kind of diffuse and bleed out. Or if you want to keep the areas a little bit more sharp, then wait till the area has dried and then go back and with the paintbrush and add that next um, value layer. Cause you can see this essentially disappeared. Do you see that? Yes. So then for me, if I want to keep the areas a little bit more within their space, um, I'm just like, okay, well then I'm gonna wait a second before I add in those slight different value changes. So then they actually show up. Okay. And for any areas that are like strong highlight, like look at right here on this side, mm -hmm. you can either just paint around those or you can um, remember you do have bleed proof white that you can use and add after if you don't leave those white enough. And I really thought about when I was creating the outline for this star, I really thought about adjusting like marking, you know how I do the hash marks of where there's shadows and when there's highlights and all that stuff. Yep. And I was gonna do that for this project, but then I thought, you know what? I actually think it would be super valuable for me to show the reference photo and let you guys make those decisions. It's a great practice in trying to pay attention to where those values are. It's not easy. It's not easy, but it's good for you. Like vitamins. Like vitamins. And it's not easy to remember to take vitamins. You know what, it really isn't. But it's good for you. Okay, so this is the start of our star, and this is why painting metallic and shiny things is like really tricky because you're looking at this and you're like, uh, what's happening here? Don't worry, just keep going. So I'm gonna move to um, like my medium value next. So I'm gonna pick this color here, or this value, and I'm gonna say, where else do I see that in this star? So I can get all of those sections at once. And for me, I see it four places. One, two, three, four. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of red into my yellow ochre and let's do a tiny, tiny bit of the sea blue. If you do too much sea blue, it's gonna turn it green. We don't want green. We just want a little bit of a darker value, but that still reads Gold. And if you look at just the hue of this, that's brown. Oh. You know? Yeah. That's helpful. So you just want to like, be like, okay, I need to mix a brown. But this is still 
like my median, it's not my darkest value, so leave room for that, okay? Don't make this the darkest part on your star. And if it's easier for you to leave like a thin white line between where these sections meet, so you don't have any accidental bleeds, go for it. You also probably are gonna start working with your two. So then on these like tighter areas. You can get that edge. Okay. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here. like it just needs to be a little bit darker. I keep thinking about whether or not you told us why we wouldn't just go from the top of the star all the way in a circle back to the top of the star and paint each section individually mm -hmm. rather than hop around from highlight to highlight to medium to dark. Mm. So two reasons. One, if you already have a pink color or a value on your brush, then it's easier just to knock out all of those at once instead of trying to match the different values after you haven't touched Every it for a few time. sections. Okay. The That's other reason, reason is if you go one, two, three, four, these areas are wet. So if you accidentally touch it, then the, all the values will bleed and blend together. So if you hop around, it leaves room for them to dry. Mm. So when you go and paint right next to it, then you uh, reduce the chance of accidental bleeds. Cool, thank you. Mm -hmm. Great question. And I think it's just a great exercise to train your eye to look for values. Seeing values is actually kind of tricky. And, um, oh, sorry, I was really focusing on making a straight line. Um, like a really easy way to look at values is to turn your image black and white by a grayscale. Then it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. Oh. Um, but try and practice doing it with color. Um, it will just increase your, your skill set. But it, it's not like you either have it or you don't. It's just like you take the time to pay attention and like exercise that skill. Um, so if you struggle with it, like do what you need to do, but then also practice. Practice not doing it in grayscale. Practice trying to say, is this a lighter? Is this a medium? What's happening? It'd be cool to do a, a bright, vibrant background like this one, mm -hmm. and then a gray scale star. Yeah. I guess it would just be a, a silver star rather than gold. <laughs> <laughs> but well, in my head, it sounds cooler. <laughs> well, actually, even with the silver star, you would get a lot of color in there because silver is reflective. So if there's color around that silver, uh, it would be reflected that's in this. True. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny with this project, especially when I was painting it, the whole time I was thinking like, ooh, this is, this is gonna be a good lesson, you know what I mean? Like, this is a little bit tricky. And then I also was thinking the whole time, does this look like a star? Is this <laughs> metallic? But then like, as soon as you like put it far away and walk back from it, like I remember, I think you came into the office and you were like, dang, because yeah, it was like up on the it wall. It caught my eye real fast. And I was just like, okay, this is good. We're good. We're, we're okay here then. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, yeah, it's excellent. But when you're in it and because you're, you know that you're just painting sections of different values, you're thinking there is no way that this is going to look like a three-dimensional 
metallic star, but it does. Mm -hmm. You step back from it and you're like, oh dang. Also, that might be a good exercise, not exercise, I guess a good thing to remember. Same with if you, like if you split this project into two, when you come back, you're gonna say, oh snap, that bokeh looks sweet. Mm -hmm. So if you weren't feeling it in the middle of it, when you come back after 12 minutes or days, then <laughs> boom, it's gonna look great. Okay, I'm going to move to the more darkest value of my star, which if I'm looking at this and I zoom in, that's pretty much like black, right? Yeah. But then I have to look at how dark that is and how it relates to my background dark value. I have already established some really dark values on my painting, and so it's just like, okay. So if I'm looking at this section and this section, they're actually pretty, can I see the overhead shot? Yes, you can. I just wanna make sure that I'm saying what they're saying. Yeah, that, that's pretty similar in value. You see that? Yes. This one just looks a little bit darker, but for me, like for you guys looking at your painting, you wanna just make sure that they relate. So if you have, if you're missing like the super, super dark values on your painting, um, then when you go and put this in, it might feel really dark compared to that. Does that make sense? Yep. So just kind of like look at it. And I'm gonna try and mix a very dark, almost black brown. And I did that by mixing sea blue, red, and yellow ochre. And now I have, see this like really dark color right here? That's what I'm gonna use. And I'm trying to be so careful because especially with these like extreme value differences, we want them to stay right where we put them. What a contrast. And I just want to try something really quick. Okay. This is, I'm going off script here. I just want to try something. I want to see what happens if I were to take just red and introduce it to some of these sections over here. Oh. I'm missing, for me, looking at this, a little bit of vibrancy. And so whenever I'm feeling like my painting is not as vibrant as I want it to be, I'm thinking, what if I did just do a drop of pure color in there? You know? I like that. And sometimes that, like, takes it to the level that I was looking for. And sometimes it doesn't, but I want to also say that it will show up better on the lighter sections. Like the vibrant color will show up better on the areas where the underpainting is not as dark. Yeah, that feels better. And something else that you can do is you could actually lift like let's say you're like, I want a more vibrant section right there, but it's really dark. You can lift up some of this color. So then that is a little bit lighter already. And then you can just drop in like red or maybe some yellow ochre to give it some warmth. Ooh, that's nice. See, isn't that nice? Yeah, that's nice. And then you kind of just work your way around like the bokeh that you already put in. Yeah, I really, I like that. So I'm gonna do that in a couple other areas so then it feels um, more connected across. I also want to warn you that um, Every paper has its limits. 
where sometimes you get to the point where you do so much layers and so much rubbing and so much messing with it that the paper itself starts to degrade. So you can't be mad at the paper, right? Because it's just like, I know that you're doing your best paper. You, you're, you're not made. You're not made for the, the, uh, <laughs> the amount of layers that I'm forcing you to do right now. But whenever I start to see that happen, I just make a mental note like, okay, I need to be aware of um, like how hard I'm pushing, if it's starting to totally pill, which happens, and that happens in my paintings, especially when I'm doing the bokeh technique, just because it's so much lifting. Um, then some areas I just have to say, you know what? I'm gonna leave you alone. I'm not gonna touch you anymore. That's fine. You can have your space, you know? Yeah. So just like be aware of that. And different papers will can take different amount of work. So this is not 100% cotton paper. Um, I think it works great with liquid watercolors, but if you're looking for a paper that can really take lots of layers, lots of water, lots of like lifting and rubbing, then you're gonna wanna use 100% cotton paper. You know, it maybe be a little more supportive to your paper. <laughs> Maybe just be nicer to it and yeah, stop, gosh. stop pressing it so much. <laughs> yeah. It's here for you. It's trying to help you. Uh -oh. be, be here for it. I accidentally touched that dark section on my star. We'll see what happens. If it bleeds or if it doesn't. Okay, I'm much happier with that level of saturation that I'm getting in my background. But now that I see what's happening is it's only around this <laughs> one, three, four. So I got to bring that to the other areas of my painting. So then it's like the red continues. It doesn't just outline the star, you know? Oh, I kind of liked the glow. Oh yeah? Yeah, like the back glow of the, the redness. The glow. <laughs> <laughs> your, I don't know what you're that trying a little to say. Bit. <laughs> It feels a little too, uh, I don't know, red intense right there. I need, I feel like I need it to. In the corner? Like right here, it's just like, okay, let's. I thought you were saying in general, and I was like, wait a second. <laughs> You're like, this is a red painting? <laughs> you made these choices. Also, you came back to do this. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, you did that, you chose this project. <laughs> you created it. You could have done blue. I think. Okay, and I feel like I need it to be, let's let some light in. I call this letting the light in. Let's let some light in over here. It's where I lift out some of the dark values on my really dark areas. Gotta let the light in. Yeah, cause some of this dark got like really dark, which like congratulations to me, I was able to get it so dark, but you don't want, you don't want the dark areas to flatten out. So if sometimes you gotta go in there and just soften them a bit. Okay, that is feeling much, much better to me. I get, I'm getting my saturation. I'm like, these areas feel more connected. Yeah, okay, cool. Nice. That was a commercial break from our star. Mm. So let's go back into our star and we're still putting in like our really dark values. So we're just gonna keep on, keeping on with that. 
And, but the tricky, and I just want to acknowledge this here, the tricky thing about values is um, like these black areas with watercolor specifically, is sometimes there's a level of, of um, transparency that makes our black values gray. So that's what I'm feeling like in this shadow. It feels like it grayed out a bit. So I'm just gonna go in with a, like a really dark red to bring in some color on that. So it's, it's adding to the darkness of my value, but then also adding a little bit of color so it doesn't feel like it's just gray. And let's keep going with that dark value. Right here. And Keenan, do you remember when I was talking about in this tutorial, I was saying like, be aware of the color of the background and the bokeh when you're next to your star? And I was like, does that make sense? And I can tell that you were like, uh, I think so, but I don't think it. What I, fully. Yes, so this is a great example. <clears throat> I have my darkest value here, and it's overlapping with a section that's super dark on my star, which means that I there's a good chance that this edge of my star is gonna get lost mm. and, and ble bleed into the background. You see what I'm saying? Yes. You see how that disappears over here? Yep. So what you can do, I'm going to keep going, right? Because we want to keep this metallic accurate. But what I'm going to do is after this is dry, I'll put a bokeh circle right here. Uh, so then that edge of the star can pop forward. Cool. You know what I mean? Yep. So that's what I meant by that. Sometimes the values match and you lose, you lose the edges. Also, in my defense, you've said a lot of things in this tutorial. <laughs> it's like, do I have to pay attention to everything that you <laughs> say? Because word? I quit. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's on record. Now I can feel my star start to pop a bit. Do you see that? It's starting to bring out a little bit of dimensionality and it's starting to kind of come off my page, which is always so exciting. And then we got to look at the sections that are left and be like, okay, this is like an in between these two ones. So let's mix that. And then I'll like start to go in and put in the different values within each section, whenever they have them, not all of them have them, but some of them do. We're doing good. You guys, you're doing great. I know that this is, this is a lot, this is a lot of work. It is. I like that flat one. The, uh, the flat one. I, let me, you know what? Let me use better words next time. I like the point on the left of the one you're painting currently the most. Mm, mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I, I, I think you mentioned it as being f fairly flat. Mm -hmm. Just like flat values across yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. And I think I like that. And then in some of these, I can start to go in and be like, okay, here's a little bit of a darker value on some of this. And 
And it's kind of tricky because with light, like sometimes on some of the points it highlights them and sometimes on some of the points it actually like is a darker value. So the rules aren't true across the whole thing because the light changes across it, you know? Do you know what I'm trying to say? There are different, well, I think so. You've like if you're looking at this point, yeah. that point sticking out is a highlight. Right. If you're looking at this point, shadow. it's dark. Yes. I was gonna say that in much more words. <laughs> And with metallics, like, there can be so much detail, so much detail that you kind of get lost a little bit. So I just want to, like, encourage you, um, it, it's okay to edit. It's okay to look at a photograph and be like, all right, I know that this photograph is telling me that there's a lot of changes in there, but I don't really, I'm getting lost. And so, like, you don't have to put every single thing in, you know? Yeah. So at this point, I'm kind of like going through and saying, um, how can I give hints of these things where it's still reading metallic like I want to, but maybe so I don't have to do every single detail because that is a lot of work and I don't want to, or my skill level is just not there yet. And it's okay, like, it's okay to look at a painting and say, I'm gonna edit this down and simplify it um, to match the skill level that I'm currently at. That doesn't, there's nothing wrong with that. I do that. I did that with this painting. Where I'm like, oh, well, let's simplify this. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see this painting from, from the original photo to yours and then someone using yours as the reference photo. Mm -hmm. It'd be really fun to see it's changed throughout the generation. Yes. Yes. So now I'm just going through and I'm looking at adding those slight changes in value within the sections, if they have them or not. And I'm just working my way around. And at this point, all of our paintings are gonna be different from each other. So this is where I need you to take a look at either the painted reference photo or the actual photograph and kind of make these decisions for yourself. This is also where I'm gonna to start to clean up and tighten and shape some of my stars. So as you can see, sometimes there's like a white border around my star where I left like a thin line so to avoid bleeding or whatever. And I'm just gonna soften those up. Soften means I just kind of mostly take the color of what's around it and blend it hmm. and try and keep its shape. And this one, I kind of want to, there's a highlight here, but I want to soften that highlight. Sometimes just going in with the damp brush and blending around um, is just what this painting needs to feel con like connected, tight, tightened up, you know? Yeah. And then remember, you always have the opportunity to lift a little bit of color out or add your bleed proof white. I'm gonna lift a little bit of color out right here because these two values are super similar. And so I'm losing a little bit of dimension. So I'm gonna try and like add a little bit of highlight just to kind of define this edge a little bit more. Okay. 
Bleed Proof White is wild. Bleed Proof White is my favorite thing in the world. And some of you might be thinking, well, you should just paint with opaque paint then, because that's what that is. <laughs> 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 I've thought about it. You're not wrong. I'm like, man, I love that I can just layer on top. And then I'm like, yeah, that's acrylic, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole genre. There's a there's so many mediums that just do that. And they're not just white. They yeah. can be other colors too. <laughs> nah, I love my watercolor. Nah. Now we are, and I just want to say, like, we are working um, with such strong mixed values that. You know, even though we like keep it, try and keep it clean and tight, sometimes you just get a little bit of bleeding, a little bit of fuzziness, but this is where I encourage you to step back from your painting and like look at it from far away instead of getting so upset at the, the imperfect edges, you know? Yeah. You can always paint it again. Yeah then you know a whole new skill set it's just good practice yeah i'm softening some of these highlights connecting where i left some white spaces okay well that's looking pretty metallic -y to me yeah it is now, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to look at my bokeh and I'm going to say, all right, bokeh, it's your, it's, it's time. Now, one thing that you can do, because I really liked that I was able to get some white, some yellow circles in my reference photo. Um, and, but what do we do? Because like, oh shoot, it's red. How do I put yellow on top of red for it to stand out? And this is where bleed proof white is pretty cool. First paint it with white and then let that dry and then dr paint yellow on top of it and then that yellow will show up. Hmm. That is not how I thought it would do, you would do it. If you want to try and do it at once, you can. Let's see the difference. So there, there I did it at once. This one I'll put in the yellow after. And let's just like do a little experiment. All right. So you guys can see. This is where I'm going to be a little like clean up some of the ones that I've already have put down or introduce new ones. You know, paying attention to the shape of them, making sure that I'm doing different sizes, let some of them kind of overlap. And this is where we can play with some bright values, some ones that really pop. And sometimes I like to actually water the bleed proof white down a little bit when I do this. So then it still is reading as a highlight, but there's still a level of transparency. It's like a soft bokeh circle instead of like a bokeh circle. Bokeh circle. It's level one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put in that one that I talked about where I want to make sure that it's still popping up from the background. So just kind of right here, I'm gonna start a bokeh and then I gotta pretend, okay, what if it kept going, you know? Cool. Wow. 
Brought it back. Brought it back. Popped it back out. And this whole area actually I feel like got pretty dark. So you can do that on any of the areas that you feel like the star is not totally coming out of. You know, you don't have to just limit it. Use this, use your materials to your advantage of your, so you're, you know, communicating what you want to communicate. And as you're doing this exercise, depending on how many times or how much you've lifted out, it's possible that you might only need one or two bokas um, in this bleed proof white section. You know, like just because I'm putting a lot in right now doesn't mean you have to. You can look at your own painting and say, actually, I don't really need that one. They seem like they're afraid of the star. I know. I'm like, how do I make these connect a little bit more? He's the bokeh that broke through, actually. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Let's see. I think what I need to do... So I actually need to introduce a darker value right here to break up that solid red around with no bokeh. That feels better. And maybe a little over here. It was too solid red all the way around. And you're like, Sarah, you went back and added that. You're right. Sometimes though, when it's nice and dry, you're like, actually, let's break that up a bit. There we go. That feels so much better. Nice. Okay, let's see what happens when I put the yellow on top of the white right here. See how bright that white is? Mm -hmm. Hopefully you guys are watching that and being like, that's driving me nuts. You need to cover that. That's good. That means that your eye is paying attention to, um, the, the values. Well, I guess my white was still pretty wet. Okay, so that's what it looks like if you paint white and then put yellow on it. And I believe this one was the one that we did at the same time, one of these. Mm -hmm. So it does feel a little bit brighter yellow. Doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I feel like let's do a little one here. Okay. A little highlight. And then I just like, I mean, you don't have to do this. I didn't even do this in the reference photo, but I'm 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 wanting to do it now. Sometimes I like to do just little dots with this white value. Mm. Like just little ones. I feel like it adds to this kind of like magical light feel. That's nice. And then if you need to do any, I mean, you guys, we're on the last step now. So if you need to do any highlights on your star, which I'm looking at mine and I'm like, you know, maybe I'll have like a little one here. Go ahead and add those now. So you can look at your reference photo. Um, I'm just gonna like clean up some edges while also um, making sure that my Highlights are where I want them to be. Okay. And sometimes that means like just kind of going off script a little bit because I'm not looking at my reference photo at all.
But just having the like range of values within this star, that is what communicates a, a shiny metallic surface. Think back to our ornaments. There's such a difference in the range of values from the lightest value to the darkest value. So as long as you've got a range in values here on your star, you're good, you know? You should name it a range of values. The star of values. <gasps> Ooh, <laughs> there could be a badge, the star of values. The star of values. It's actually a Batman themed project as well. <laughs> Who would have thought? Who I mean it's pretty impressive. I think we're I think we're just about there. I think probably my darkest values on some of my star could stand for one more, like, one more layer to get those nice and dark. That little extra layer is just making them pop. Nice. Man, that star looks cool. I think it's done. I think we're there, you guys. Now, this was this was a lot. This was like, I after I painted this, I made the decision not to put it in the box. And then I think on my Instagram stories, I asked, like, you guys want to learn this? Are you up for a challenge? And like, overwhelmingly, the vote was, yeah, I'm up for a challenge. And so all I can say is you asked for this. No, I'm, just <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I hope that even though this is definitely not a beginner friendly tutorial, um, it's just a great lesson and it's always a good idea to push ourselves. And sometimes what we learn is, well, I'm not quite ready for that yet. <laughs> and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. And so, um, I hope that you guys had fun painting this. I hope that just talking about values and how the light hits metallic surfaces, um, you will be able to then go into your own life and your own work and pay attention to those things. Um, the, our, the artists, one of our greatest gifts as artists or skills is our ability to observe. And so if anything, I hope that you learned that if you just like, take time to actually pay attention to what you're looking at, that will inform what it is that you create, just that in itself. So um, at the very least, I hope that you guys can do that. And um, if you are on Facebook, you can share your work. Um, we have a Facebook group called Let's Make Art Watercolor. It's large, but it's very encouraging. It's very kind, and it's a great opportunity to learn from other people, um, as well as a safe place to share your own work, because it's really scary to do that. And everyone knows that in that group. Like Everyone can empathize and relate to the courage that it takes to share what it is that you're painting, especially when it's not perfect. So recognize that as um, an opportunity because, you know, where else are you going to find? Well, you know, let's, yeah. find, well, you know, mm, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe you got a whole watercolor community somewhere <laughs> else. That's just as good, but, um, that's there for you. And if you are on Instagram, you can tag us. We would love to see your work. You can, um, just look at the hashtags we've included in the description. And if you need any of these supplies, you can find them at, Let's make art.com, and I hope that your holiday season is merry and bright. See you next time. <laughs>